just start yesterday for uh, the inside for the inspection. The outside for the inspection, we are going to start doing it today. Uh, we have three sections, as we said yesterday, the A section, the B section, and also the C section, which is on the trailer. On the top of it, there is a coupling you guys need to mention, and also the lights are part of it. So, when you start doing the pre-trip inspection, let's assume we're going to do all of them today. Let's take the check. Check, check the leaks. If you have any, anything that's broken, once you check that one, it's good to go. The four lights, the four lights are the headlight, signal light, ID light, and clearance. How the test goes is you make sure you need to point it, and you have to say the name. You have to name it. Point, name, and describe it. Right? So those four lights are the headlight here, signal light. Those three lights in the middle we call it ID light, and those two side by side is going to be clear up okay what we're gonna do now we point already answered that part the name already answered that part how do we explain to you it's on the paper all the description are there and also on your book if you need to if you need more reference you can go back to your book on section 11 this going to sign about or explain about the specific inspection so the lights are as you see them there is a color some of them is Amber, some of them is white, some of them is red. So make sure it has to be properly colored. You don't have to mention light by light, color by color. Just say make sure it's not properly colored. And make sure all the screws are tight and secure. The glass are not cracked or broken. And it has to be on the working condition. If you see the screws like this, make sure the screws are tight and secure. And the same thing here. This is signal light. Make sure which the screws are tight and secure. The glass are not cracked or broken properly colored and also it has to be on the working condition those three on the middle the same inspection those two side by side the clearance lights it's going to be the same inspection i'm not suggesting to start talking about the hoods i'm not suggesting to start talking about the bumpers unless unless you see some kind of damage all right if it is not don't 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 touch anything because we we don't have a time to explain everything what we see and this is not a part of the test since it is not a part of the test and you are not going to throw anything out of them, don't bother. Just let it go. Okay? It's not on the video. Once if you complete the light and the leak, you can put the hood. Come on this side. And assume there is how many parts are here there is so many but not all of them are necessary for you to explain on the test so let's divide it into five different sections so once if we divide it on those sections we are going to explain piece by piece on every section okay we have a wheel section which is on the front wheel we have a brake section the front to brake we have suspension here front suspension and we have this steering system and we also have engine compartment so make sure when it comes to this point, you have five different categories. Front wheel, front brake, front suspension, and we also have the steering system and also engine compartment. Okay. Now once if you know those five categories, how many parts are we looking for to explain to them? Every category what we mentioned, the five of them, and we still have sub parts under those categories. You can start from outside to inside, which is you can start from this side, go all the way in, or you can start from inside, from the engine compartment, you came out all the way, uh, the outside part. Let's start from our outside for now, which is on my way. Okay, this is a wheel. This is a front wheel, we call it. We have tire, rim, lug nut, and half seat. Those four parts has to be mentioned because we have four different points you are going to go piece by piece. We have a tire, we have a rim, we have a lug nut, we have half seat. You need to check the depth of the tire, 432. Make sure the tire is not break up, no, uh, no, no damage. damage. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And no cut on the tire and proper air inflation. 
this guy right here is the rim, no dent, bent, crack, or illegally welded. This is a lagnet, no missing, no loose, no rust, no shine. We have half seal, make sure proper oil level, and you need to check all the bolts, make sure they are not missing, has to be present, and also no sign of oil leak. Okay, that's how you need to explain. When you move, you can find the brake. Brake has another four point. We have brake hose, brake chamber, slack adjuster, which is on the, on the front here, and also broke drum. You can show them from outside here, or you can, so you can show them from inside. So the brake hose is no cut, no crack, uh, no fried, and also not leaking. And the brake chamber, no dent, bent, and also not leak. Make sure it has to be tight and secure. And we have a sick lamp on the brake chamber. Make sure you need to check the bolts, not missing or loose. And uh, there is a slack adjuster next to it. There is a pins. Make sure the slack adjuster is not damaged and no missing pins. And also the slack adjuster has a push rod. Every time when the brake applied, not more than one inch on the push rod and also 90 degree on, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the brake. You need to check those too. This is a brake drum, no cut, no crack. And inside, make sure there is no dust, there is no oil, or there is no grease in it. Okay? And inside the brake drum, there is brake lining and brake shoes. Brake shoes is the metal part of it. Make sure it's not cut, crack, or missing rivets. And the brake lining is a pad. Make sure not less than one fourth of an inch thickness. And also no grease, no oil, and also no dust. Okay? You need to check the, for that. And the other one is going to be the third part of it is suspension. Suspension has front suspension and we also have a rear suspension, we also have trailer suspension. So that's why I say front front. This is mountain bracket or spring bracket. You need to check all the bolts and nuts. It has to be tight and secure. No damage or crack on the mountain brackets. This is leaf spring. That's what we call it. The leaf spring is you need to check it on two different ways. The first one is leaf spring each and individually, make sure no cut, no crack, and also not illegally welded. As a group, you need to check these uh, clamps, make sure the clamps are not missing or loose. And this, the leaf spring itself, make sure it's not missing, it's not cut, it's not uh, shipped. It. And once, if it is not uh, one for zero missing, the vehicle has to be out of service until it's repaired. Yeah. And this is a U bolt. There is a U-bolt handle, there is a bolt on it. So make sure the bolt, the U-bolt is not damaged and no missing bolts and nuts should not be loose or missing. This is a shock absorber, it's a part of uh, front, front spring suspension. Make sure the shock absorber is not dent bent or not leaking. There is a top and bottom, there is bolts. Make sure the bolts are not uh, missing or loose, should be tight and secure. Okay, we covered the front, uh, front wheel front brake and also front suspension. Now we're gonna go to the steering system. Steering system has two points. The first one is this guy. This guy we call him steering gearbox. The gearbox has big bolts as you see them, okay? Make sure the bolts are tight and secure against the frame. The steering gearbox itself, no cut, no crack, and also not leaking. All the bolts has to be present and also not missing or small oil leaks. The rest of them, we're gonna call them the steering linkage. They are linking each other to make the steering system functional. So let's start doing one by one. This is a pitman arm. This is a drag link. On the top, there is upper control arm. On the bottom, there is lower control arm. And also the tie rod. So uh, each and individually, they are connected by castle nuts. They are connected by castle nuts. So this castle nut so these castle nuts have a pins make sure the pins are not missing has to be present the castle nut has to be tight and secure on the back of the castle nut there is a ball joint that ball joint needs to be greased and lubricated all the time so what we're going to do what we're going to check is once if we mentioned all the names this is a pitman arm drag link upper and lower control arm and this the big bar over there is going to be a tie rod so everything has to be bars so make sure they are not cut they are not cracked they are not bent dent or illegally welded that's what you need to check the last part we are going to check from inside is going to be the engine compartment on this part of the engine compartment we have three parts which is the first one is coolant container you cannot see the level of the container on this side so we need to take this dipstick out to check sometimes they ask you how do you check it because you cannot see so you're going to take the dipstick out and check and this is a, a 
make sure it's not leaking, should be tight and secure, in proper oil level. This is the hose, make sure the hose is hard, no cut, no crack, and no fried, and also not leaking. And this is uh, air compressor. Check the air compressor for the uh, leaks. Make sure this air compressor, you need to mention it, that this air compressor runs by the gear, because since we don't see the belt, it has to be a gear-driven air compressor. Air compressor has another uh, hoses, so this hoses has, uh, make sure they are not leaking. Make sure they are not leaking. Uh, uh, no air leaks on them, although missing bolts and nuts. This is due to stick for the engine oil. There is two ways you can explain. You can take it out, clean it, put it back in and check the level and the condition of the oil. Or you can uh, explain to them verbally how you're gonna do, how you're gonna proceed to check the oil, the, uh, oil level. All right, this is the A section. What we did now is the A section. Okay, once, if they ask you to do the A section or for the entire vehicle, that is how you're gonna do it. Now we are going to do the B section. Okay? If they ask you the A, that is. Yeah, we're going to go back. Uh, if they ask you the A, that's where you're going to start. And we have another three parts on the engine compartment on the other side. We're going to go ahead and finish it. So this is now let's start doing the B section. Okay, B section starts from here. If they ask you to do B, you are not going to open the wood. Okay, wood is closed and we're gonna move from here. So the B section is we're gonna check from the door. We have a light here, make sure signal light. The same inspection, no missing screws, properly colored, no crack or broken lenses, and it has to be on the working condition. We have side mirror here to check the mirrors. To check all the brackets, all the bolts, nuts needs to be tight and secure, no missing or loose. The mirror itself, make sure it's not damaged or it's not cracked or broken. You need to open the hood, the door, and check the hinges. Make sure the door hinges has to be tight and secure, no crack or broken, and the door has to be open and closed smoothly. So we need to move this guy. This is the steps. We need to check all the oil, the grease, no slippery, must be clean and clear. We have fuel tank here. You need to check fuel tank for the leak. Make sure there's no leak under the fuel tank. You need to check the fuel straps. The straps, if you see any kind of shiny metal, that means the strap is indication. That's the indication of the indicator of uh, the straps are loose. Okay? And make sure it's not leaking. This is a fuel cap. You need to check the seal inside, and the fuel cap itself has to be tight and secure. This is on the middle here, you will see the electric line and also the air line. Every time when you check the air, uh, the red is always for the service and uh, no, the emergency and the blue is always for the service and we have electrical line on the middle you need to make sure you need to check plug on both sides on the sides and this both sides has to be plugged and make sure it's not burned cut or fried and the air line here make sure it's not cut crack fried or leak you need to check on both sides this is a glad hand and there's inside here there is a glad hand seal that seal has to be present make sure it's not cut or missing and make sure it's not leaking. You need to check that. This is uh, catwalk. When you check the catwalk, always just like the same thing like the steps. No oil, no grease, no slipper. Okay, it should be tight and secure. We have a frame. The frame is no cut, no crack, and also not illegally welded. In the middle here, we have a drive shaft. Okay, drive shaft has universal joints. The universal joints are always uh, greased and lubricated. Make sure the drive shaft is at least itself is no cut, no crack, no broken, and also no illegally welded. Now, when we come here, we have another three different uh, car sections uh, because we have another uh, axle here. This axle has the wheels, the brakes, and suspensions. The same thing like in the front. We already did it on the front, but if they ask you to do everything or if they ask you to do section B, you have to explain those three sections again. We have a wheel section here, you need to check the wheels. There is two wheels instead of one. 
So I make sure for 232 and the depths on between these two tires, no, uh, no, no trash, no debris, no stone, and it has to be clean and clear. These two tires should not have to touch or rub each other. And 232 on the depths, and no mismatched tires here, no cut or damage on the tire here. This is a rim we already did it, so make sure no cut, no crack, and also no illegally welded. Now we have a lug nuts, no missing, no loose, no rust, no shine. And we also have here the axle seat instead of hub. Okay, this is axle seat. Okay. You cannot measure, you cannot check, or you cannot see the oil level for the axle seat. So what you need to check is make sure all the bolts has to be tight and secure and also no sign of oil leak from the axle seat, okay? Once if you complete the wheel, you're gonna move inside. When you move inside, you can find the suspension. We have rear suspension here. We have a mounting bracket also. We have a bolts and nuts, should be tight and secure. No missing or loose on the mounting bracket or no damage on it. And we also have leaf spring suspension. We did the same inspection, what we did on the front. The leaf spring, no cut, no crack and also no illegally welded. And as a group, make sure they are not missing, they are not shift. If one force is missing, the vehicle has to be out of service. And we also have a U-bolt on the middle again. That U-bolt, no damage on the U-bolt. And also the bolts has to be tight and secure under the U-bolt, not missing or loose. And this is a torque rod, okay? This is a torque rod. There is different shapes of torque rod. Small, circle, rectangle. It's different kind of parts. Okay, make sure the torque or the inspection is going to be the same thing like lift spring, no cut, no crack, and also no illegally welded. Once if you complete that one, we're gonna go to the brake. We have another another four parts on the brake too. The same thing we did on the front. We have brake chamber, brake hose, slack, adjuster, and brake drum. So we have a brake drum right here. No dent bent or uh, no dent bent or leak. And make sure all the C clamps has to be tight and secure. No, make sure it's not missing uh, any kind of bolts on uh, damage. So we have a hose, another two hoses. It's a little bit bigger size of uh, brake chamber than the front part. So we have two hoses. Those two hoses are make sure they are not cut, they are not fried, and also they are not leaking. In the back of the brake chamber, always there is a slack adjuster. Okay. The purpose of the slack adjuster is to, to adjust the brake. So it's always located on the back of the chamber. So on the back of the chamber, the slack adjuster, we have a pins. Make sure the pins are not missing or loose. And the slack adjuster itself should not have any kind of damage. And every time when the brake apply, not more than one inch on the push rod. Okay? And the inside the brake drum, you have to go inside. Remember this. You cannot see like the brake drum or like in the front. So if you want to explain to them the brake drum for the rear wheel and also the trailer, you have to go under the vehicle and touch it. That's where the brake drum is. So you need to touch the brake drum, you need to touch the brake lining, you need to touch the brake shoes. Okay? Make sure there is no oil, no grease, and also no damage on the, uh, on the, uh, the brake drum itself. And the brake pad, which is the pad part of it, the brake shoes, the, the brake lining. The lining is not less than one fourth of an inch. The brake shoe itself, no damage, no crack, or no broken, no missing rivets. Alright, when you come here, we have this uh, mud flaps. Make sure it has to be no cut, no missing, or no, uh, no loose. You can check this one. Now, when we go inside, there is a coupling system. Alright, when you check the coupling system, there is a few things you need to mention, maybe four or five of them. This is a platform. Platform has a bolts and nuts. Make sure it has to be tight and secure. No missing or loose bolts. This is a fifth wheel. When you check the fifth wheel, it has to be greased and lubricated properly. And the top of the trailer, which is top of the fifth wheel and the, the, the trailer section, there is the apron. Make sure it has to be greased and lubricated. When you do the inspection, make sure you should not see any kind of gap between the fifth wheel and the, the apron. Yeah. The apron has to sit fully on the fifth wheel, okay? Inside this, this uh, fifth wheel, there is a king pin. King pin is located on the, on the trailer, so make sure there is no damage. It needs to be greased and lubricated. And there is a king pin jaw or king pin lock. You need to, every time when you do the inspection, the king pin lock has to be on the locked position, all right? On this side, yeah, on this side, this, this right here, 
is release arm. The release arm, always when you do the inspection, the release arm has to be on the locked position. All right? So every time when you unlock it, you need to pull it. So you can see when you pull it and when it is locked. And make sure when you do the inspection, the, uh, the release arm has to be on the locked position. And make sure it's not damaged or illegally welded. All right? Okay, this is uh, gross members on the trailer, no damage, no illegally welded, no missing bolts and none so on. All right, now we have lights on the back. There is a brake light, which is on the white side. And there is a signal light and also brake lights. And there is a reverse light on the white. So I'll check all the screws, make sure the screws are now missing or loose. And all the glasses, make sure it's not cracked or broken. Should be cracked uh, properly colored, then it has to be on the working condition. All right, this is B. This is where the last B is going to be in. For those of you guys, if you wanna see where the, the brake drum on the back is, it's right here. This is a brake lining right here. And also the brake shoes is right here. That's what you need to check. When you go inside, it is visible. You can touch it and explain to them one by one. All right? Yeah, brake shoes is the metal part. The brake lining is the part part. All right, any questions so far? Okay. Let's assume we are finished the S and Ds. The last one we are going to do is the C. Okay, if, if they ask you the C, automatically think. When they say, I want you to do the C, you need to do the light, you need to do the coupling, then you need to do the trailer. That's all it is. That's what C is. Okay? If they tell you B, you are not opening the hood, just come here. And you finish this one, and you finish the coupling, check the light, and you're done. You go inside. And we leave like this thing. Okay. This is C. It is the front of the trailer. This is the side of the trailer. Make sure to check if it is not, no hole, no damage on the trailer. That's all you need to check. Okay, and check this uh, DOT sticker. Make sure it has to be present, no kill, so not missing. When you move, you can find the landing gear. When you check the landing gear, make sure the shoe has to be no damage and always on the raised up position. This is a landing gear, no damage, no crack, no broken, or no illegally welded. This is a landing gear handle, should be secured all the time. And you need to check as this one is support. Make sure all the bolts and nuts has to be secured. Okay, you move, you can find this guy here. This is a signal light on the side again. Make sure it's not cracked or broken lenses and it has to be no condensation and it has to be properly colored in the, in the working condition. Now, we find another section on the wheel. So there is another, another uh, axle we can find on the trailer. We have three of them. We have a front axle, we have rear axle and now we are facing the trailer axle. So what we're gonna do here is the same inspection we did on the rear. The tire has to be 232 on the depth, no mismatch tire between these two, no stone, no trash, no debris between those two tires, and no damage on the tire and proper air inflation. We also have another rim, no cut, no crack, no damage, and also no illegally welded. We also have another lug nuts, no missing, no loose, no rust, no shine, and we also have another hub seal all the bolts has to be tight and secure make sure there is no sign of uh, leaks and we also have another uh, spring suspension this is mountain bracket which is different kind and shape another mountain bracket here no damage and we don't have a bolt so should be the properly welded no illegally welded and we also have another torsion uh, torque rod here no damage no cut no crack no illegally welded another leaf spring suspension here and you still need to check single and you still need to check as a group and you need to check on the middle of this you will see the u-bolt again you need to check that u-bolt no damage on the u-bolt and make, make sure no missing bolts and nuts and that's axle seal yeah no this is a hub this seal. is a hub seal so there's only, only one axle seal. only one axle okay good which is on the middle good. and we also have another bra uh, brakes we have uh, still four we have brake chamber brake hose slack adjuster and brake drum once if you see what brake drum is look like, once if you see the brake drum is uh, how many parts are listed on it. Anywhere you go in, anywhere you find the brake drum or the brake system, that's why you are going to explain to them. But it's always, always it doesn't matter which vehicle you go. There are four different things. Brake hold, brake jumper, slack as you start in brake hold. That's it. Okay? All you need to do is the location. If they ask you to do everything, remember this. 
if they ask you to do A, B, and C, which is everything, you still have to mention three times brake, three times suspension, three times wheel. All right? You cannot, you must do it one by one. Even though if you do it the first time, even though if you do it the, third, the second time, if they ask you to do everything, you still have to go inside here and explain to them one by one. Because every part has one point. Unless you touch it, unless you mention it, unless you describe it, you're going to miss that point. Okay? Remember this. If they tell you to do everything, that means you have to count piece by piece to earn that point. There is no group point. It's only piece by piece. Every part has one. So we have to explain to them one by one. All right, any question? Any question so far? Okay. Yeah. Let's do the mud flaps. Another box and nuts here. Make sure they are not missing or loose. Don't cut or missing on the mud flaps. Now we're gonna go back. When we go back, we have another light. Signal lights and also brake light. So you need to check on the screws, has to be tight and secure, no missing or loose, properly colored. And also it has to be on the working condition and also no crack of broken lenses and should be properly colored. Okay, we have on the top three lights as you see them, they are mark light or ID light. And we also have side on the side here, there is another light as ID light. So make sure they all inspected the same way like we did on this one, okay? We have a door and we have a door latch here, make sure it has to be locked. And this door is rolling door, so there is a cable, make sure no missing cables, it has to be tight and secure. We also have the OT bumper here. You need to check all the, the stickers. And the bumper itself, no damage, no illegally welded, and no crack or broken. And now we need to move on this side. We have a couple of parts left to check uh, on the engine compartment. On this side of the engine, we have three different parts left. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that one. And we also have the exhaust. We did not mention it earlier, make sure the exhaust is no hole, no smoke. And if you see any kind of black smokes, that, that indicates the, the, the exhaust system is leaking. Okay, should be tight and secure. Make sure there is no kind of any hanging hardware on it. Now we are going to be on the engine compartment. This is still on the class A. We did not finish it. We should come back on this side and complete. But now when we have, when we come here, we have three different parts. This one here is the coolant container. You need to check the level, you need to check the hoses. And the container itself has to be tight and secure, no missing or loose bolts. And the hoses, no cut, no crack, no fried, and also not leaking. This is alternator. Alternator is run by the belt. Make sure the belt is not missing or cut. And the belt is not less than three fourths of an inch belt tension. And on the back, we have electrical parts. This electrical parts has to be tight and secure, no fried, no burn and it has to be properly attached. This right here on the bottom, this is a water pump. This water pump has uh, a pulley on the front, front of it and that pulley has a belt. So what we are going to mention or make sure you need to mention to earn that point, the water pump is run by the belt. Since the belt is attached with the water pump, make sure that pulley is run by the belt and we are explaining to them, make sure this water pump is run by the belt. All right, and you need to check all the bolts and nuts. Make sure it has, uh, there is no leak between uh, from the water pump. You need to check that. All right, this looks like complete your outside pre-trip inspection. We already did the inside pre-trip inspection uh, yesterday. I'm assuming everybody has a little bit an idea just to study. All right, and uh, every Saturday and Sunday we do the uh, A, B, C, and the inside pre-trip inspection. So next week, Saturday, we are going to do the S and B's if the weather permits. And every Sunday, we do the C's and the inside pre trip inspection. All right? Does anybody have a question? No? Okay. All right. Well, love you guys. We hope we're going to have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not easy. Huh? <laughs>